lights, the lights, the lights. This is the question that I've been asked most often about the indoor do-it-yourself grow towers. In this video, I'm going to explain everything about the custom LED grow lights used in this project. So stay tuned. So you see, my first idea was to try wrapping a cheap set of LED grow lights that I purchased from Amazon around the main irrigation feed tube. This was not only a terrible and useless idea. Looking back on it, it's also pretty funny that I thought this could work. After this failure, I went back to the drawing board. I contacted several companies that offered custom-built LED strips with the grow light spectrum. The first response I received was from a Chinese company called Wisva Lighting. Over the course of two months, I exchanged more than 35 emails with my project manager and sales agent, Harry. After much consideration of light spectrum, brightness, power consumption, and production costs, the LED I decided on was the 2835 sunlight spectrum. Next, we worked out the details of how the LED strips would be constructed. For this, I chose to make six 1.5 meter LED strips that were 20 millimeters wide. The width of the strip was important because one strip needed to fit on each of the six sides of the hexagon shaped aluminum tube that I would be using as the mounting profile. The cost to custom make each light strip to my specifications was just an insanely low price of just $10.43 each. The total cost including overnight shipping from China was under $100. In addition to purchasing light strips, I also needed a power supply that could deliver continuous 24 volt DC to each strip. Harry recommended that I use the Meanwell HLG320-24. Finally, I also purchased the following other components. A 30 amp 12 outlet power distribution terminal block, a six red lighted switch panel, a digital timer controller, and an aluminum hexagon shaped tube. Once my lights arrived, I then needed to first mount each light strip to the hexagon shaped aluminum tubes. The custom LED strips did come with adhesive backing, but I chose to also apply a layer of contact cement too. Here's a demonstration of how the light bar is put together. First, you have the aluminum hex tube, which is used as the lighting profile. Each 1.5 meter LED strip is adhered to each of the six sides. This is the half inch PVC feed tube which is connected to the pump in the reservoir and runs through the center of the aluminum tube. On the top of the feed tube is attached an irrigation manifold. Then for the light rail base mount, a one inch to one and a half inch PVC slip adapter is used to hold the light rail vertically in place. I also wanted the option to be able to turn each strip on or off based on how many towers I had installed. Using a chlorine tablet container from my control box, I wired the power supply to the power distribution box and then the distribution box to the switch panel. The switch panel was then wired to each LED strip. The components were then placed into the control box along with an additional digital timer that controls the pump. The result was an even 360 degree ray of light that metered at just under 25,000 luminums to the plant canopy. With all six light strips on, the current draw is 293 watts. I run my lights for 13 hours on and 11 hours off. Based on the average cost per kilowatt at this time of day, these lights cost me $12.75 per month to operate. One drawback to using such powerful lights in a full white spectrum is that these lights produce a serious amount of bright light. To give you an example of how bright it is, here's a view of my outside of my house at night with the window blinds closed. My system is located in the kitchen, which is also open to my family room. When the lights are on after dark, it makes viewing the TV difficult, and for this reason I chose to run my lights from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. In the description, I've listed links to Wispa Lighting as well as contact information for Harry who provided me with a massive amount of support to build these LED strips to my specs. In addition, I've also included links to all the other components that were used to make the light, rail, and control box. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, we hope that you will subscribe to see more updates to our indoor and outdoor do-it-yourself grow towers. Thanks for watching.